Greetings to all the lovely ladies and gentlemen out there. I'm your host, The Progent, and yet again, tragedy seems to strike people that I very much care about and have influenced me uh, in my decisions to enter the entertainment industry of sorts. Um, this past few days, uh, Isao Takahata has passed away, and... If you don't recognize the name, you'll recognize the fact that he was one of the two faces of Studio Ghibli. And the movies that he's created are extremely dear to me. They're very wonderful movies. And I all I need to say is their, is their names before people can recognize them. Grave of the Fireflies, uh, Pompoko, and only yesterday, to name a few. He was very uh, important back in the 60s and 70s as well, with uh, several of his own works being pretty popular at the time, uh, one of which uh, being working with the, uh, Hayao Miyazaki on Lupin the Third. So, you know, everything goes back to Lupin the Third for me. But I wanted to talk... Uh, today particularly about my personal experiences of learning about Mr. Takahata and the movies that really influenced me growing up. So I suppose this is a bit more of a personal story than usual. Um, I was 13 and I didn't have many friends, uh, needless to say. I was very much an introvert, and I I kept to myself. I my best friend was uh, my grandfather, actually, and you know he was he's one of the best people I've ever known. So uh, every now and again, he and I would have these uh, quote unquote sleepovers where we would watch a movie in his bedroom and. Uh, when he felt tired, he'd go to his bed and I would, uh, grab a blanket and, uh, lay down in his recliner and just, uh, go to bed as well. And this one time, uh, he went to bed and I decided to put Turner Classic Movies on and he had a pair of, uh, headphones that were those wireless things that, uh, played the sound from the TV into the headphones so that... Uh, you weren't disturbing anybody in the house. So, uh, I, I obviously didn't know at the time that Turner Classic Movies was doing a tribute to Miyazaki month. This was back in, I want to say, 2006. And I had only ever heard of, uh, Miyazaki in passing. I had, uh, I had heard of Spirited Away by... A friend from about a year or two ago, but I'd never had any other experience with it. So I decided to see what it was all about, and the movies that played that night basically changed my life. I hadn't really been into anime for a long time, and this was basically my re entering into that particular domain. Um, and the funny, the funny thing about it is that the two films that they played weren't even Miyazaki uh, specific. They were Isao Takahata films, which is a little odd. But the movies that played were Pompoko and Only Yesterday. And both of these films have been major influences on me. Um, particularly Only Yesterday being my actual favorite film. Pompoko being about uh, Japanese tanuki that uh, are trying to protect their little forest from urbanization during the 60s, 70s, 80s, that sort of time period. And uh, the mythology behind the uh, transformation that the raccoons have, uh, magical powers and such. And it was very well done environmentalist uh, film that really brought to 
attention how important it was to help the environment and help keep animals uh, in their proper uh, nature. And uh, it, it, I, I ended up watching this movie in both English and Japanese that night, and it was just one of those experiences where I grew a great fondness for Japanese uh, mythology through it on top of uh, the animation. Uh, so that's sort of uh, a stepping stone into my general love for Japanese history and mythology. The other film, only yesterday, uh, is even more important to me. Um, the first time I watched this, obviously, I was pretty young. I didn't understand it completely. Uh, and re-watching it years later when it finally is localized uh, into Blu-ray DVD here in America, I love it even more because it's so well written. The art is beyond beautiful. The soundtrack is wonderful. The characters are really well written. And uh, the, the whole lesson of the movie is just extremely impactful. So this movie is about a young woman who's working as uh, essentially a businesswoman in Tokyo. And she goes on a vacation to the countryside to some distant relatives. And from there, uh, we start to see flashbacks to her past when she was in uh, grade school. And how these little stories somehow connect to what's happening to her in her current state of mind with trying to find happiness in her life and uh, go where she feels like she belongs and each story is uh, more important than the next and the transitions between her modern life and her childhood are just seamless. And while it is a longer film, and uh, a lot of people I've shown it to can say that it gets a little boring at times, I've never seen it as such. Everything feels essential, and everything feels uh, paced properly. It also used uh, a Japanese cover of, uh, oh, I don't remember the exact name of the song. Uh, I, I'm just going to go with Some Say Love. Uh, and it's just a very nice cover of it but the uh the influence that this had on me when i was younger was i could never find the movie and i was obsessed with finding it because in my mind i felt like did i imagine this movie existed because i'm pretty sure i didn't and it took me years to find it again and i learned that it wasn't available in uh, the US and I was miserable about that because I wanted to watch it again and I didn't want to just be uh, a lovable pirate uh, so I waited and sure enough a couple years ago uh, Studio Ghibli released basically their Masterworks collection of really nice uh, blu-rays of all their movies so I ended up getting that imported from Japan and then about a year later, they actually localized it uh, on Blu-ray uh, with Daisy Ridley as uh, the main character. And I was just like, oh, come on, I, could, I wish I waited a year so I could have gotten that. But at the same time, you know, it's, it's just the movie that, that's the important part. And its message rang really clear to me once I rewatched it. Uh, as more of an adult. It's not about what happened in your past that really establishes who you are as a person because you can change who you are, you can change what you do at any time. You just need the confidence and the willpower to be able to do it. And if you find yourself doing something you don't enjoy or don't love, then it's never too late to follow your heart, follow your dreams, and do what you think 
is what you want to do in life. And that message has always been important to me. And it led me to doing this entire show. And none of that would have been possible without uh, Mr. Takahata and him making this film. So, Mr. Takahata, for everything that you ever did, for all of the movies that I've seen of yours and all the ones that I still haven't seen and I intend to, you have my eternal gratitude and thank you for basically being the man that brought me back into anime. I've been The Professional Gentleman, and thank you for listening. <laughs>